I'm sure you're like most people who've dreamt of their dream home, but did you ever dream about building that house in the cloud? Sounds crazy, right? But what if you could? How would you do it? Well, this GitHub repo is linked in the video description for the Azure Landing Zone, so that you can build almost everything you need to use the cloud. And there are a few things missing, like the furniture, the drapes, the decorations, all that stuff that makes the environment really you. And I'll tell you more about that in a minute. Now, this architecture will help you build your house in the cloud no matter what size you need. Now, if you scroll down a little bit more and click one of these Deploy to Azure buttons that best suits you, first you have to select which cloud you want to use. Then you scroll down and your Entra ID tenant will be already selected for you. And now you need some special secret hidden permissions in order to make this thing actually work. So here in PowerShell, type the command connect-az account. This will authenticate you to Entra ID, formerly known as Azure Active Directory. And now we need that user that you just signed in as captured in a new variable called $user. Next is that super secret command. Just promise me you won't share it with anybody. And it's that scope here that really makes this special. Back here in the portal, once the command is finished, I'm looking at my management groups and specifically the tenant root group. Everybody has one of these and it's how Azure AD and your Azure subscriptions connect to each other. And this is the absolutely highest level of permissions control in Azure, or is it? Everything really looks normal here, right? You've got your owners and maybe you even have a user access admin. But watch when I click refresh now that my command is run, and we have a new owner inherited from the root. And that's just like the user access administrator. And the root here is Azure AD. Now jump back to our deployment and refresh the page. And now your permissions issue is fixed. And now you can move on and select your region and East US is good for me. On the next screen, we need a resource prefix and this will keep all of your resource names unique. The next choice is your subscription layout. The dedicated option will use three different subscriptions for the build. And if you want to do that, you'll need to set up those three subs before you deploy anything here. But there is a cool automated way that you could do this. So comment below with the word subscription vending if you want to see a dedicated video on that. Next, it's highly recommended to prevent any more of those classic resources or any systems using those terrible unmanaged disks from ever being deployed ever. What a nightmare. Can't believe we ever, sorry, <laughs> moving on. You can set the customer usage options any way you like and then click next. Now this is the biggest section of the build, starting with how long we want to retain any of our monitoring data. And that could be anywhere from 30 days to two years. Next, you need to select the management subscription. So what's that all about? Well, here is the architecture for what we're building. The identity stuff is at the top with Azure AD and your management groups and the identity subscription over there. And that's for your domain controllers that live in the cloud. Then you have the four working subscriptions, management, which is where all the logging and automation is done, connectivity for the VWAN, ExpressRoute, VPN, DDoS, then the landing zone itself, which will be where we're gonna migrate our VMs. And that's gonna have stuff in it like networks, key vault, storage, backup, DR, images, and VMs. And then we have another one for the sandbox, basically your playground so that you can learn about the cloud without impacting production. Now, I'm not gonna go over every setting here because there is a ton of them and you can read just as well as I can. So I'll just touch on a few things. This first group here is all the monitoring solutions that you'd like to add into your environment. And I'd suggest you leave them all on yes. Then you scroll down a bit and you'll find the Defender for Cloud section. This is a native cloud security solution and Defender is just a whole family of products to protect everything about your systems. So I'd leave that all on too. You just need to enter an email address where you want Defender to send all of your alerts. Then scroll down to the bottom. Sentinel is Azure's native seam and source solution. And I made a video for that way back when it launched like four years ago. So comment below with the word Sentinel if you'd like to see an updated video on that. Then click next. The network section gives a few options. Use no if you already have networks in your environment that you want to use. Otherwise, Azure Virtual WAN is kind of like an MPLS cloud. And the two other options are your more traditional hub and spoke networks. The difference is if you want Azure Firewall or a third-party solution. 
And now I need to select my connectivity subscription. And this is where you'll connect back to on-prem to keep things isolated from the cloud. And the default address space is just fine for me, but make sure that yours isn't the same on-prem as it is in the cloud, otherwise they won't be able to connect. And I'm deploying all of this in the East US region, and I do want DDoS protection and a private DNS zone. That'll help set everything up for private endpoints, which I'll need later. Then select if you want to build with a VPN or express route, and then we need our firewall tier. And if you aren't sure what the difference is between basic, standard, and premium, you should watch my firewall series where I dive into all that stuff. Next, you'll need an availability zone for the firewall to scale, and I suggest picking every zone that's available, doesn't actually cost anything extra, and choose if you want the firewall to act as a DNS proxy. And I'll come back to that feature a little bit later. Let's click next. In the identity section, you need to choose if you want Azure policies to be applied to your domain controllers, which might change the way that they behave. So before you answer that question, scroll down, select your identity subscription, which will be where your domain controllers and your key vault live, which will store and secure your credentials. And all these options should be yes. That way you can block RDP to your domain controllers, protect them with a network security group, block anybody from the internet from getting to your DCs, all while protecting them with Azure Backup and connecting them to your hub network so you can manage all of your other VMs. Then click Next. The landing zone configuration is where we select all the Azure policies that are gonna set all of the house rules. And all these settings here could be on, off, or set to just audit. But read through the list and make sure that they're the right choices for your environment. Then scroll down. In the Corp Management Group section, the first question is about connecting your hub to your landing zone, which is talking about setting up that VNet peer right here. And I'll say yes to that. Then you have some more Azure policies about protecting your landing zone. So all the connectivity for the LZ goes through your connectivity subscription. Finally, some management group organization. You should select this if you're using Azure PaaS services like web apps and you wanna isolate that from your other subscriptions and management groups. And the last tab is to set policies for everything else. The decommission policies will prevent anything new from being built in certain subscriptions and shut down all your VMs at midnight. The sandbox one will block any connections to your other subscriptions, so what happens in the sandbox stays in the sandbox. Click next one last time and then review all the settings for your new home in the cloud. And when you're ready, click create. Now the build time here will depend on all of the selections that you made, but kind of the average is 20 to 30 minutes. And then you have a whole bunch of new management groups with your subscriptions inside them. And you'll have several resource groups for all your new stuff. Now feel free to look around in your new home, but before you move in, there are those few final things that we need to do to make everything just right. And since this video is long enough, you'll find that information right over here. And happy learning.